I'm back. This is Chandler for Melda Production, and today I want to talk about M Guitar Architect, which is something that isn't out yet, so I'm going to give you kind of a preview here and kind of explain some things you can do with it. So for those that may be not familiar with it, and I want to show some interesting and perhaps unique features here. So if we open it up here, it looks a little bit like MMXXX, which is great because there's all sorts of different ways we can route this and lots of different possibilities we can do with it. So I'll start, first of all, you see the input and output here. Output's easy to understand. Wet, dry is fairly easy to understand. Input is going to control how much gain is going into this. And the amount of gain is going to affect your pedals and your amps, etc. So you want to make sure you have a good level. Now, I could just move this by hand. Some of you might want to do, but there's another way to do this. If I turn this on here, I have my guitar hooked up, play something. Now, if I want this gain, I think, ah, you know, it's not higher. I need the gain up a little bit closer. If you click analyze input level, it's going to try to bring the gain up to here. So all you have to do is just click this. It's going to mute your guitar and then you play as hard as you can on all six strings and it will try to adjust the input level to match that. So here we go. Let's click analyze input level. So I'll calculate it at 7.58. So now whenever I go into any amp or something like that, I should be getting a good level. But you might think, you know what, that's a little bit too hot. I don't want that. So you can just bring it down manually, like eh, let me bring it down like two or three decibels and see how that sounds. So it's up to you to adjust. But the most important thing is when you're going through different presets, this isn't going to change. So you'll always have the uh, same input level, which is great. So now you're thinking like, okay, well, I need to see what else can it do. If you click on one of these boxes here, you can insert one of these effects. So like if you click and put an amp in here like this. I can put a cabinet in here like this and you're kind of done. Of course, choose which amp you want. Same thing with the cabinet. Oh, okay, I got this cabinet, etc. And so then you have your rig. Now, of course, this might take a few clicks. Like, oh, this is four clicks. So you may not want to do this. I set up some templates for you here. Hopefully this will be included. So these presets will have everything set up. You don't really need the auto input, take that off. But you have an amp, you have a cabinet, you have a reverb and you have volume and pan, which you can adjust the volume, which you don't really need, but you can change from left to right if you want to do that. That way you don't have to click to get all these things in here. It's just right there as soon as you turn it on. And you can adjust your amp or change the amp here and change the cabinet here. If you're saying, you know what? I don't like these amps you chose. I don't like the cabinet you chose, etc. You can resave this to whatever you want. Or more importantly, instead of opening to a blank M Guitar Architect every time, go into here and click set default settings whenever you have things set up however you like it. That way, the next time you open it up, it will open to those exact same settings with the amp you want, cabinet you want, reverb you want, etc. This isn't only an M Guitar Architect. You can do this exact same thing in M Turbo Amp. So if you're like, oh, every time I turn on, uh, you know, M Guitar Architect and I try to put an amp in, it always starts at Apollo. I hate Apollo. If that's the case, just go into M Guitar uh, Amp or M Turbo Amp, I should say. Choose the amp you want, and you can even change the knobs if you prefer that. And whoop, click Set Default Settings here. So that way, when you open M Turbo Amp inside M Guitar Architect. It'll start off with that amp you like. So that's a quick little trick there that can help you. Now, of course, there's other things in here. Like you can see here, I have it blanked out. If you double click, it'll turn it on and off. And so I have a tuner here if you want. Uh, it's polyphonic. If you've seen my video on M Tuner, you know what it does. I'm not sure. I haven't tested the MIDI output. I'm not sure if it works on here or not, but maybe it does. So you can see there's lots of different things besides just a basic setup. I'll show you dual cabs so you can put two cabinets together. You can put two amps together, etc. If you didn't want to do it like that with a mixer and change the volumes and have it left and right here, 
If you don't care about that, you can use the ratio control. Turn this down. You're not hearing that hiss. Coming out of there. With the ratio, you're doing the exact same thing, except you can't change it left and right. However, what you can do is you can blend between them very smoothly and easily like this. So you can go from maybe this one's clean and this one's dirty. You can go from clean to dirty just by doing that. I think I actually might have it set up like that. Let me hear it. Sorry, I had it set on that single coil, it was humming a bit. But you get the idea of how you can switch between the two sounds with the ratio. Another thing, if you look in here, you might be wondering, like, what is this drive? Look at it, it's a pedal. However, this looks a lot like M Turbo Amp. Why does it say drive? I look in here, I don't see anything that's called drive. What is it? What I did is I just went into amp here. I chose whatever pedal I wanted. And in here, if you right click on one of the modules, you'll see something that's called rename. Now you can rename this to whatever you want. I'll call this OD there. Make sure you do this before you uh, attach any modulators, multi-parameters, uh, et cetera. And now it just says OD. This is a small thing, but this is actually a really good thing for a quality of life because sometimes you make a really complicated preset and it's like, what, what is all this? I see like four amps, but some of them might actually be drive pedals. So by doing this, you can label them however you want. You can be like, oh, clean amp, dirty amp, etc. Uh, chorus one, chorus two, uh, hall reverb, spring reverb. And you can label these, whatever makes sense to you. That's another good thing. Something else I should mention here is I did a video before about these different effects. I took it down, but I'll, I'll try to put it back up. And besides that, you see like all these different effects here. The studio here, this has lots of good stuff. However, not all of these are included in M Guitar Architect. So if you see all these, it looks nice, but I actually unlocked all of these. So if you have M Wobbler, this will be unlocked. If you have M Unison, this will be unlocked. If you bought M Turbo Reverb, this will be unlocked. So the ones you purchase will be unlocked, the other ones won't be. The only one that I believe will be unlocked is Convolution EZ. This is great if you want to load impulse responses. You can re load impulse responses in M Cabinet. However, M Cabinet is going to change them to minimum phase. So if you want to keep the same phase and delay, use, M or use Convolution EZ. You can also load uh, other types like reverbs and things into Convolution EZ. But if you want the other stuff, you're going to have to pay for it and unlock it by purchasing the main plugin. I'll show you a few other things here. The auto level I showed you, it's basically the same thing as analyze input level. Uh, you have a crossover here. This is just the multiband features, which you've seen in all the other Melda plugins. I believe I did a video on this going over all these before. So the analog, this is just a minimum phase crossover. So the left side will be everything under 500 Hertz. The right side will be everything over 500 Hertz. So now they're split up and you can put them on different lanes here and put different effects on them. The same thing here, the analog LP is a linear phase. So this I believe will cause a little bit of latency, but it might be a little bit clearer. So while I'm tracking, I may not want to do it, but afterwards, it seems fine. Same thing, there's another linear phase. Hybrid I think is linear phase and it'll cause some latency. They all sound a little bit different. Yeah, the level crossover. I believe I explained this in other videos. Panorama, so here, everything on the left will be left input right will be right input and you can process them in different ways. Same thing here with mid side. So if I move this over, everything going left will be like mono signal. Everything on the right will be the stereo side. Spectrum, I think I showed you how that was split up before and tonal transient. So it'll take forever to explain these other ones, but if you haven't seen it, check out the other videos or go to melderproduction.com. They explain it over there. But this is really cool because I don't think I've seen this in any other guitar software. Delete it. There's lots of other things like mixers, ratio, I showed you before, I can blend between the tuners, volume pan, saw it, uh, order, maybe, you know, this is just allows you to switch the effects in different ways. So instead of uh, drive and then modulation, it'll be modulation and drive, and you can switch them back and forth. Uh, oh, the other one, looper. This one is really, really cool. So I specifically ask for this to be in here. This will work like the looper in MXXX and I guess kind of like M Super Looper, except this is a really, really, really cut down version of it. You can't do a bunch of different loops. 
But what this is good for is, I think, two things. One, if I want to practice maybe jazz, I can play in my chord progression on my guitar, then just put it in the looper, and then I can play over it afterwards. But another thing which I think this is really useful for is just to try different sounds. So if I have a sound here, let me turn on my guitar. So we have our looper, and I'm going to turn off follow host playback, and I'm just going to record this really quick chord. Now I hit play, and it's going to loop over and over again. And while it's looping, I can go to the amp cabinet, etc., and change it like this. So if you're looking for a way to like check your tone and you don't want to be playing by your computer, play a chord, try to hear it and you know mess with your mouse, this is an easy way. Just play something and then see, oh, what settings sound good. So I think this is a really quick and easy way to do this, besides just a way to practice or have fun. Uh, this is about it. I don't want to go over everything, but there's other things like just quality of life stuff that's nice here. You see on the side, the A, B, uh, all the way to H. These are different settings, A and B. So if you look here, it's blank. Oh, actually it's not blank, there's something there. So I could go between these two different settings. And if I have a song like, ah, you know what? I really like these settings, but maybe if I change it, that would be better. You don't wanna to have to go back and undo what you did. It's hard to remember sometimes. What you can do is just copy here, and go to one of the blank ones like B here or C, click paste button here, and I have the exact same thing, but now I can go through, make my settings, I can add some other effects, change the cabinet around to something else, and then I can play my song, listen to A, flip to C, and see, ah, which one sounds better? Did I improve it or not? So this is a really, really convenient tool, and you don't have to worry about losing your original settings. You have A through H, so there's a lot of things you can try with this. On top of this, we have multi-parameters, so using this, we can hook many things together. Uh, like if I wanted to hook the reverb length, click quick learn, reverb length, good. And then I want to hook that up to, let's say, amp gain for some reason. This is actually not a good idea, but it, it works. So now if I go in here, I turn down the gain, it also turns down the length. Turn up the length, it turns up the gain. I don't know why you'd want to do this, but it's possible. You probably want to use this in <laughs> maybe more constructive ways. So, but this allows you to hook multiple parameters together. So for example, if I wanted to increase the gain of something while also turning down the volume or gain in my cabinet, so it's not getting too loud, it might be good for that. And this will allow you to do it really smoothly over the course of a song. You don't have to do it, you know, before the song, you can, blend between these quickly and smoothly. Also, these can be hooked up to MIDI if you want to be used by a controller. And you can also, instead of blending smoothly, you can go from one extreme to the other and use it as a button if you want to turn on and off a stomp box or overdrive, etc. Also, we have the modulators here, which I'll just show you. But these basically are LFOs. You have a follower, which will respond to the level. You have an envelope here. You also have a random, which will make it move at random. What this will do is if I just put learn here, learn the tone, right? Move it like that. Not doing anything, but if I click here, it's moving like this. So I have it set here. And of course, you can sync this to your song if you want. And control it here. You can use the follower, envelope, random, etc but this is just a different way that you can move various parameters in there to come up with all sorts of creative and interesting effects. So I know I talked a lot in this one and you probably still have lots of questions. So if you have those, leave them down below. 
If you like this, give me a thumbs up. In the future, I'm gonna try to make some videos going over how do I'm gonna make presets for this. So that'll give you a better idea of the tones. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't done that and check out all the other plugins at meltaproduction.com. Till next time, see you.